Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through architectural patterns. Okay, so basically we have discussed multiple times about patterns, right? So patterns are nothing but something which is similar between multiple projects. So in multiple projects, what will be the common things? Guys? Like in coding and everything, you'll be having some kind of things like some kind of pages and some kind of basic code, security code, etc. Right? Whereas in architectural designs, so what is the main goal of any software or any device guys? So in most of the devices, we will be saying that we can run multiple processes concurrently, right? So basically they will not run concurrently, but it appears for us in a concurrent way. Like the transition between those operations will be in nanoseconds. So nanoseconds cannot be recognized by us guys. Okay, so that is the reason why we assume that they are running parallelly, but even they are running only single at a once. So basically, even in your computer, you will be saying multi-core and everything, right? So we'll be thinking that there will be at least one or two processes running in the background, one after one, multiple processes running at a time. But basically in a computer also, if it is having only a single CPU, remember that. If you are having multiple CPUs, it's okay. It will be running multiple processes. But if it is having a single CPU, it will run only one process at a time. And in between the transition between one process to another another process, it takes some time guys. That time is very negligible. So that we will be assuming it as it's running concurrently. Okay. Okay. So the first pattern that we will be seeing is concurrency. So basically nowadays every application is concentrating more on concurrency guys. Like it want to make the time minimum between the transition so that the user will not be having any issues with it. So assume that you are opening a software. And when you click another software, it is taking one minute or it taking too long to load. Like whenever you use some old computers with old processors, old, old RAM. And if you install Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator or any kind of high end applications or any high end video editors are from Adobe, they, the systems will get hanged and they will be just loading slowly guys. So that's what most of the people don't like. So that is the reason why concurrency is one of the most important thing. Okay. Okay, so nowadays almost every software application is suitable, suitably crafted to achieve parallelism or concurrency. Okay, so you might be having a question that okay, how can they do the things that one after the other concurrently? Why there could not be any issue that two are trying and both this both are colliding like that. So basically in operating system, we are having multiple concepts, right? So in producer consumer, we discussed multiple concepts like there will be a key and it will be unlocked and locked like that right so similarly here also we will be using some task scheduler patterns guys so guys so here there will be existence of a multiple activities active objects so each having an operation tick so this is nothing but the operation that they need to do guys so the task scheduler by executing tick activates the object to perform the task once done it returns it so basically you can assume this tick as a key guys to the processor so once a object takes it, it will open the door and it will go inside and it will, it will do its job. And once it's done, it will lock the door and it will give, give again the key to you, key to the owner. Okay. So in that way, it will be working fine. Okay. So that's a simple explanation for you guys. So the next application is nothing but in your operating system, which we discussed previously. Okay. Okay. The, so the second type, the second important pattern is nothing but persistence so basically persistence is nothing but basically whenever you are doing some process or any kind of application will it directly run your data or it will store somewhere the data like at least some samples or some outline of your data yes it most of the applications do store in your system or in the server databases guys so basically these these files will be database files or system files so the size will be really low and they are some a bit protected when we compare to the normal files Okay, so any data is said to be persistent if it gets a rem remind even after the completion of execution. So even after the completion of execution also these are stored as sometimes you'll be observing temp files, right? So temp files are also a form of saved files. Okay, so in many organizations, the immediate way to store the persistence file is either stored in database or in a formal system files. Okay, so this includes database management system patterns and application level persistence patterns. So doing this also, they can get some more insights about their users and everything else. Okay. Okay. So the next uh, pattern is nothing but distribution. In this case, the process communication implemented between various components of a given system. 
when they are far apart so basically there is nothing they we cannot say that the, both devices will be always near or always connected through a cable right so there might be a chances that you need to connect it to a server and you need to get the data like that so in that situations also it should be distributed so basically when one system is in another place and another system is another place there should be a connection so that you can establish and you can transfer the data or you can do any kind of things so these kind of concepts will also be common in most of the projects so this is also an architecture which they will be copying from or which will they will be inheriting from the previous projects so in this case okay i have discussed this so hence we hence we use a broker partner sorry we use a broken broker pattern where broken pattern is an intermediate component so you can even use some components in between to connect them okay so this is just an introduction about uh, architectural patterns guys okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea so in the next lecture we will be going through architectural designs okay okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching